Welcome to Dodgers Daily. I'm Casey Porter. I'm so glad that you've decided to tune in. We have a very, very, very special guest this afternoon. Ryan Ward, outfielder in the Dodgers organization, better known as Wardo, joins Dodgers Daily. So, hey, Wardo, thanks for joining. Yeah, no problem. Good to be here. Okay, man, you're back home in Millbury, Massachusetts. You're sitting about halfway between the capital of Massachusetts and Springfield and Boston. I know you're a huge Patriots fan. As a matter of fact, I've, I've seen on social media that you've actually got to go to a couple games and you enjoyed that. They have a huge game this weekend with the Bills, and I know the Bills are probably – I'll probably been the better team this year, but they don't really have a whole lot to play for. So what's going to happen to that game? The Patriots have to win to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's a do or die game for the Patriots. So uh, we we all got their back. Hopefully they come out firing. Uh, based on the last year's game, they had to play them in the playoff and they didn't even get a stop on defense once. So <laughs> got to hope for the best. Just just hopefully, hopefully they're able to pull this one out. Yeah, no doubt about it. OK, so let's get to the fun part. Let's talk about baseball. Wow, what a 2022 you had. On August 2nd, you hit home run number 25, which led the entire organization. And I know you're very humble, so this is going to be hard for you to hear all this, but I'm going to go over it anyways. On August 2nd, you hit home run number 25, which led the entire organization at that point, and it led all of AA, actually, so all the entire Texas League. You were coming off of a month in July where you hit 303, and you had an on-base percentage of 364 in July, and you had a seven-game hitting streak in June where you hit 416. So, wow, what a season you had in 2022. I know last time we talked, we talked about some of the swing adjustments you made. So, talk about how you felt last year at the plate. Yeah, no, um, last year was fun. It was, it was one of the first years that from start to finish, I I felt comfortable with my swing. I didn't feel like I was making adjustments as I was going or still trying to get comfortable with with what I was doing at the plate. So I was able to take that and then start integrating like more of an approach skill into every at bat and like go through of like, okay, like this is what he did to me last time, or I haven't faced this guy yet. Like, let's see what's going to happen um, without trying to lose my aggressiveness. Cause like I'm a very aggressive hitter. I like to get up there and swing. Um, I don't like, usually I don't really get into deep counts. Like I'm up there, I'm up there to hit. So learning that there's times where like, yes, so I am up there to hit. And there's other times where like he, might not be coming after me in a certain situation was was something that I had to learn through process and trial. So it was a fun year. Uh, I learned a lot, but it was it was good to finally feel comfortable with what was going on with my swing. So it kind of sounds like it was a linear process where you, you make some swing changes. And so you concentrate on that. And then once you feel comfortable that, then you can move to the next level, which is actually game planning. What pitches a swing at? Would that be correct? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like just learning, like, especially like, in certain situations or like if I faced a guy before, like, okay, this is how he had success versus me. And this is where I had success versus him. So learning that, like, I'm not playing his game. I, I got to go with what I'm good, what I'm good with. You're very studious. So I'd, I'd like to ask you this question. Cause I'm always curious. Do you look more for the, the type of pitch being thrown, the location, the velocity, what do you look for mostly? Or is that based on the scouting report? Uh, it, it can be based on the scouting report. I, I, I'm more aggressive towards fastballs. Like I like to, I like to pull the trigger on fastballs more often. Like I don't, if it's in the strike zone with a heater, I'm, I'm probably going to go after it. Other stuff, once I get like deeper into account or stuff like that, like that's when I'll start into like zoning and looking forward to start in certain uh, certain spot and kind of go off of that. Okay, you had we mentioned the great 2022 offensively. You had stretches where you were maybe the best hitter in all the minor leagues. I'll go ahead and say that because you had some phenomenal moments. But then you have the injury on August 9th. so. That had to have been frustrating with, for you because you had so much momentum built. So kind of take us through that process. Yeah, um, I had just come off one of probably one of my better weeks too, um, heading into that. So like trying to trying to keep my head in the right space, like trying to not lose the feel of what I had going on. Um, I felt at that point in time, going before the injury, I felt very confident in what I was doing. I felt like every time I was going up to hit, I was better than the pitcher and there was no doubt about it in my head. So trying to maintain that while I wasn't able to be on the field was, was something that was my main focus and like trying to come back and stay in the same groove that I was. Yeah. And diving into it a little bit further, your average 255, 25 home runs that led the drillers at 255 led the drillers. You were second in RBIs. You led an OPS as well. And so, you know, that kind of that mix, we talked about this last time, that mix between, you know, batting average slash contact in power. It seems like you found that good mix, haven't you? 
Yeah, yeah, this year I, I felt like I did a pretty good job, like maintaining my average. Um, I mean, granted, a little lower than than I would like, but two fifty five. Like, I'm not going to complain about that. So, yeah, I'm I'm very happy with how the year went, power wise and average wise. When I tell people all the time, if you can hit double A pitching, you can hit any pitching in the world because it's you know we saw where your team Tulsa, heck, I think the average pitch. I don't mean like you know, that the top end pitch, but the average pitch thrown was like 94 and a half miles an hour. Yeah. We had some slingers on our team. We could really throw it. Yeah. I'm, I bet there were a lot of nights that you were glad that you were facing the other team's pitch. <laughs> <instead of laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. You know, we, you've always had the offense, you know, you're the only bull, Bryant bulldog to hit over 400 in a season. You struck out only one time your senior year there at Millbury, Massachusetts, the Woolies, you graduated with less than 100 kids. I still I tell that story every <laughs> single time I get a chance to talk about you. Okay, so we've always known about the offense. The defense was fantastic, man. I've got a lot of video of, of you playing defense. I love the throw home in the ninth inning to save the, the game when, when Big Guillermo was on the bump and you made some good sliding catches there in left field. You looked like you really got comfortable this year in left field. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was that was something that, the Dodgers and I really honed in on was like my defense, like becoming a reliable, like make every play and be able to get after balls in the outfield, working on first steps, like getting more explosive, working on angles. Um, I did a ton of work on my arm to try to build up some arm speed. I mean, arm strength. Um, and I feel like this year, like I started to see some results and things paying off that I've been really working on. So, so I started to feel a lot more comfortable out there, especially when I started to realize like the work that I was putting in was, paying off and I could feel that made me feel a lot more comfortable while I was out there. One thing that's very motivating, I've seen it with my own eyes, is your manager, Henny, the mayor of Drillville, as people call him, shoot, he's out there in the outfield with you hitting all the ground balls and all the fungos. He's working as hard as everybody, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's always out there. He's always, he, if you need anything, he'll he'll do it in a heartbeat. Sometimes he's even going to ask you if you want something just to, just to make sure that you're good and you're comfortable with where you're going into. Okay, professional baseball, you know, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You're never standing still because the people around you are either getting better or getting worse too. So the off season is huge for guys like you. So take us through your routine up until now. And then, you know, kind of some of the things that you're working on, wanting to get better at, wanting to maintain maybe, and then your off season from here to spring training. Yeah. So basically right now I'm, I'm working Monday through Friday, seven to three 30. So I'm up at like four, four 15. Oh, wow. I go to the gym. Uh, my dad's actually been coming with me, working out with me too, to like just come have some fun and some laughs while we're doing it. So I'll do that. Um, go to work, work all day. After work's over, I go to the cages, and uh, that's where I'll start getting like my swing work in and and talking with my hitting coaches, going through stuff like that, and then come home. Usually rest up, and that's that's kind of like a routine day for me. Um, mm -hmm. Do my conditioning after I hit. Sometimes up at the high school, just go do some running. Or around here, like I have some hills in my backyard. I'll go do like hill sprints, stuff like that. Just keep moving. Um, but yeah, like I'm just trying to like, at first that was tough. It was, it, was, it was tough. But once I got into like the routine of this is the day I'm doing it. This is the day I'm not like getting a sleep schedule and everything. Just now it's, it's a routine. Like now I wake up yeah. with no problem. I'm not tired. I'm not miserable going to do it. Like I'm enjoying it and I'm having a good time. So I'm just looking to keep that rhythm up and, and make it to spring training and get into the spring training rhythm. Anything in particular that you're you're working on the most that you would like to see improve for your game or that you're trying to maintain the best? Anything in particular? Yeah, I'm still really working on like the first step explosiveness, uh, crossover explosiveness, um, just kind of like working on my first step speed. That's not only going to help me in the outfield with with the jumps I'm getting in the reads, but also on the base paths, like maybe be able to steal, steal some more bases because I'm a little more explosive off the get go and and just create a whole new avenue of the game for me to get involved with. The little chance that I've gotten to talk to you, it just seems like you do such a great job of of being able to embrace the moment. You know, the moments are huge in professional baseball when you have seven, eight thousand people in the stands, like you have at Tulsa and Jack Leiter and Bobby Miller are the two pitchers that night. You know, you have huge environments and you had them there at Bryant as well. So you're the type of guy that doesn't shy away from them. You like to enjoy those moments, you know. So, you know, I, I kind of wanted to ask you that. Being this close to the major leagues and being this close to your pinnacle of, of, of reaching the ultimate goal in this game, do you ever stop and just go, wow, I can't believe that I'm actually this far and I'm this close to the major leagues? Or, or do you not let yourself think like that? Yeah, I try. I mean, there's times where like, yeah, like, OK, like I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. But I try to I try to keep it out of my mind as much as I can. 
because like I'm not trying to get satisfied with where I am and give up. So like to me, it's I'm not there yet. I need to keep going until I'm there. Like keep that mindset and keep myself working and chasing that goal. We talked about you being this close. Of course, double A is in Tulsa and then triple A is in Oklahoma City, which is about 90 miles uh, west and a little bit south of Tulsa. And hopefully that's where you spend most of your 2023, if not in Los Angeles. So what are your goals heading into this next season, 2023? Yeah, I mean, my goals are my goals are I'm trying to keep my goals simple. I mean, I'm just trying to not think about what I did last year. It's a new year. I'm trying to improve off the things that I think I needed to improve of off last year and also improve on the things that I did well. So just kind of like micromanaging, going back, talking to coaches, seeing what they think I need to improve on, thinking what I need to improve on and just continuing to go out and have fun and enjoy the season and enjoy the ride. You're going to get to go to that game Sunday. I forgot to ask, are you going to get to go to the game there? No, nah, yeah. no, I'm sure I'm sure we'll have a little get together somewhere at one of my buddies' houses or something and we'll be watching. Awesome deal. Okay. I like to finish this. The message, you know, hitting offensive baseball, it's all about failure. You know, I think I read one time where where professional hitters are only perfect with their timing, like maybe five percent of the time, you know, as far as just timing everything up, having the perfect bat angle, the perfect all of that together all at once. So hitting is more about how do you hit the ball? when you actually fail, when your timing is not perfect, you know, if that makes any sense. So, and plus if, if you fail seven out of 10 times, you're considered a great hitter, right? So yeah. for all those kids that are experiencing all this failure for the first time and that want to become Ryan Ward and they get so frustrated with it, how'd you deal with it? How did you get into the situation you're in right now? Yeah, honestly, there was, there was some, especially this year, there was, there was some downs. Like there was some times where I was like, I don't know what's going on. And honestly, like talking it out this year with, uh, my hitting coaches with my teammates around me, just like letting out that frustration rather than keeping it inside of me and letting it dictate how I'm going to do today. Um, that was something that was huge. And the other thing that I've, I've always um, gone with is something my dad said is the best part about baseball is you get to play again tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have that football where there's like a week break and you have to think about it all week. Like tomorrow's a new day. You got a new game and you can flush what happened yesterday. Cause it doesn't matter. There's nothing you can do about it. So, just continuing to move forward, like understand that there's there's going to be times where where stuff happens and it's out of your control and you got to just really lock in and control the things you can control. You got to play yeah. for Austin yeah. Chubb, fantastic manager there at High A Great Lakes. You got to play for the mayor of Drillville last year, Scott Hennessy. Uh, they call it, everybody calls him Henny. So, man, you've been fortunate in your time there with the Dodgers to be to have worked with such great guys. So kind of talk about the organization, the managers you've got to play for all as a whole and, and talk about how great it's been. Yeah. I mean, fortunate is the perfect word to play for Henny and Chubb. Um, they're great guys. They're awesome managers. They're, they're players, managers. They're, they're with you. They're looking to have fun. They, but they also expect you to get your work done. Like it's not, Oh, like let's just have fun all the time. Like it's like, there's times for fun and there's times like where we're going to get our work done and have your back in all the staff from Goody and I had Elion one year I had pill uh, Popkins who, who, who got to get the call to the twins and all them. Like I've just been very fortunate to be able to work with these people. I mean, they've given me everything and there's nothing I can do or say that will even come close to thanking them enough. And they just make you feel comfortable. Like they build a relationship yeah. with you. It's not that they're not just there to help you. They're there to help you and, be with you like there there's never someone that just says oh yeah do this and walks away like they're going to create a relationship with you they want you to ask why are you why should i do this when they say something um, everything's conversation give and take like you don't like something they're going to work with you to fix what you don't like about it and get the same result so it's just an awesome awesome very smooth easy you feel comfortable situation of being with the dodgers so i hear a lot you know that they they put a routine for you don't get me wrong and they and they tell you kind of what they they want you to do but then they allow you to be you and kind of do it the way that you need to do it. Would that be correct? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Exactly. There's, there's, they want you to get done, but if it's how it's written or how they're saying to do it, if that doesn't feel right to you or something, they're going to find another way that feels right to you to get the same result that they wanted to begin with. Yeah. So I know a lot of guys are getting ready to load up the pickup and head out to Arizona to get an early start. When's that going to happen for Ryan Ward? Uh, we'll see. I'm in, I'm in contact with them. So, so we're waiting on a date to get officialized, but it's coming soon. I know that for sure. I know this is the time of year where you start getting itchy, isn't it? You know, when yeah, you start wanting to yeah, play now, baseball. Now I'm starting to itch to get back. It was good to be home, but now it's time to get back after it. 
All right, Wardo. Hey, man, this is the second time you've come on Dodgers Daily, and you were such a wonderful young man, and I just so greatly appreciate all the support you've always shown Dodgers Daily and coming on twice. So thank you so much, Ryan, for coming back on. Of course. Thank you for having me. I love it on here. It's a blast.